Welcome to this video on magnetic fields. This is the first of two videos focusing on magnetic fields. In this video, we'll have a quick look at the notation of magnetic fields, how we orientate them, how we draw them, how we label them. And then we'll have a look at four different hand rules that are used to predict forces and directions using magnetic fields. So let's start. So magnetic fields are created by regions called domains, which effectively are established by the orientation of spin of electrons in certain ferromagnetic materials. They're like little regions or crystals. We find that even in a ferromagnetic material, they're randomly orientated. And so overall, these little domains that effectively have dipoles with north and south, whilst they exist in regions called domains, they kind of cancel each other out. And generally, a ferromagnetic material doesn't have an overall magnetic field. However, if we align them in the presence of another magnetic field, we can create a permanent magnet. So this is the domains that are aligned in a magnetized ferromagnetic material. We know that magnetic poles can either be north or south, traditional looking bar magnet. And we also know that like poles repel. So if you place two north together, we've all experienced them pushing away. Or if you place two south ends, they'll push away as well. And of course, unlike poles attract, so north and south, you'll feel this force pulling those two ends together. So let's have a look at four rules for drawing electric field lines. The first one is that each field line is a continuous loop. They leave the north end of a bar magnet and enter the south end. Actually for any magnet, not just a bar magnet. For example, a horseshoe magnet's the same as well. And of course they pass through the magnet back to the north end. So let's have a look. Here's a diagram of a north and south, a dipole magnet. And we've got the field lines, typical shape of the field lines around it. First task, how many mistakes can you find in that diagram? Pause if you like. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five different errors here in terms of field lines that are going from south to north rather than north to south, as we've written here. All field lines leave the north end of the magnet and enter the south. So this is an incorrect diagram. This on the right hand side is our correct diagram where every one of our field lines leaves the North Pole and ends up at the South. The ones at the start here are saying this is seeking out from the North for the South and this one's coming back into the South. But there's a clear attraction from one end to the other, always traveling from the North to the South end of the bar magnet. Good stuff. Number two, field lines do not intersect. So here's a sample of a poor diagram. Students actually lose marks in exams when they draw diagrams. It's a regular question to draw in the uh, field between two bar magnets and quite often people overlap lines and lose all their marks. It's not good. Okay, so this is what we are after, where all the lines draw. In fact, even here, this is not a great diagram where these two are touching, they should be separated. Third rule, the direction of the magnetic field at a point is along the tangent to the field line. Let's see if we can make some sense. So right at this point here, along this one field line, you can see if we were to draw it moving off as a tangent, it's exactly where our compass would direct the south seeking pole, the red north pole of the compass is traveling a tangent to this field line. As you move along this line, you'll see clearly what I mean. The next one is at a tangent again, at a tangent to the field line, at a tangent. So at the top here, at this point here, we could state the magnetic field is actually acting straight to the right. Starting to go downwards, downwards, always at a tangent to the magnetic field line. And finally, the closeness of the field lines represent the strength of the magnetic field. So I have here a diagram, and you'll notice that at the two poles, you find a lot of these lines are densely drawn in a particular amount of area. So the close lines in the magnetic poles indicate a strong region of magnetic field. Conversely, at the far extremes here, you find that there's only a few field lines in the same amount of area. So these spread field lines indicate a weaker region of magnetic field. So that's the one, two, three, four rules for electric field lines. Let's have a look at a bit of a notation now in terms of how we label magnetic fields and even currents. So first of all, traditionally in year 12 physics, you'll find they'll describe magnetic fields traveling left to right, up or down, or in and out of the page. So this is what you draw if you had to draw the magnetic field lines to the right, straightforward. Arrows, straight lines moving to the right. Likewise, the left, line straight forward with an arrowhead pointing to the left. Fields up the page, line straight up, arrows to the top of the page. Field down the page, pretty common sense, straight down. 
Now, where it gets a little bit different, it's tricky to draw, as I've shown up here, it's tricky to draw lines coming out of the page and into the page, or in this case, out of your screen, into the screen. Let's have a look at the notation we use. So this is how we draw field lines coming out of the page. If you imagine each one of these black spots was effectively like a wire coming out of the page or a pencil on the screen coming out towards you. If your eyes were looking at this arrow, here's the analogy of why we use a dark circle, a dark spot. This arrow was coming towards you. You would effectively see a dot getting bigger and bigger as it comes towards your eye. Let's try that again. Arrow comes towards you. And here you'd see that dot getting larger and larger. So a dot represents a line, or in this case an arrow, coming towards you. So each one of these dots represents, if you like, a magnetic field line coming straight out from the screen at your face. Okay, that's why we use the dot, because it's like the front end of an arrow coming towards you. Alternatively, a field going into the page. If you imagine looking from behind at the arrow, and all you could see is the crosshairs, it would shoot away from you. Okay, so an observer would see the tail feathers of the arrow as it moves away from them. We'll do that one more time. Shooting away. And effectively, you'd see that cross getting smaller and smaller as it moves further away from you. So a cross represents, if you like, the back end of an arrow going into the page. So whenever you see these crosses, this represents a magnetic field line. The field lines still are going in and out of the page in terms of the orientation, but these ones have got the crosshairs at the back. They're moving into the page. I hope that makes some sense in terms of the fields out of the page and the fields into the page. They're the two that students sometimes find challenging. Wire is the same. Always we draw a piece of wire, a little symbol I for current, and to the right. To the left, up the page, down the page. Now, the wire is represented by the circle. And again, there's this dot coming out towards you like an arrow coming at you. So this represents, if you like, a piece of wire threading out of the screen towards your face with the current traveling towards it. On the other hand, you have the circle representing the piece of wire coming again in the alignment of out and into the screen, but this is now an arrow tail going into the screen. So this represents current going into the page or into the screen. Okay, try these please. I want you to try and match scenario A, B and C with field lines one, two, three. Which one matches with which? Pause if you like. A is matched with field lines two, north to south, strong in between and branching away on the ends. Part B, repulsive to south. Again, we're not south because the lines are going towards the south pole. You notice they bunch up with the poles where they're quite strong, the magnetic field, but they never meet in the middle because they're repelling one another. So finally, we find here C, the two norths. We know the norths because the lines are going away from the the magnetic poles and again they never touch in the center because they're repelling these one two three field lines are really really straightforward easy exam question the sat questions that you can be asked again can you match d e and f to magnetic field lines four five and six pause if you like a current carrying coil that would generate this particular pattern magnetic fields going through and going around and circling back again the current carrying loop this represents one, two circular patterns around the bases. And finally, the current going straight through. This is uh, pattern number five. Again, familiarize yourself with these. These have come up in the exam. In fact, this was an exam question many, many years ago. Finally, if we look at the Earth, the Earth has a very, very strong magnetic field as well. Without it, we'd be um, in all sorts of damage from ionizing radiation. It travels around from the bottom of the globe to the top, what we call the South Pole to the North Pole. If we were to follow these, again, we'd find our compasses align themselves in this pattern where the compass shows the magnetic field at a tangent at that point. Here we find that this compass is pointing towards the south. What we know is the geographical north pole is actually a magnetic south pole. And the geographical south pole is actually a magnetic north pole. Okay, caution. We're about to look at four right-hand rules. You only use your right hand. Destroys me when I see students during SACs and exams using their left hand. Should be using right hand rules for these magnetic fields. The first of our right hand rules is the right hand grip rule. The right hand grip rule allows us to predict the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire given the direction of the current flowing in the wire. So here we have a wire 
standing vertically and the car is flowing from bottom to top as shown in our arrow. So it's called the grip rule because one uses their right hand to grip the wire. So first of all, you grip the wire and you point your thumb in the direction of the current. Thumbs going up in the same direction as the current. Grip the wire with your fingers, so wrapping around. And the direction of your fingers, which is showing here, rotating from the left hand side around the front to the right, predicts the direction of the circular magnetic field perpendicular to the current flow. So as Hans Christian Orsted, who discovered this in the 19th century, he found that if you ran a current through a wire, it creates or generates a magnetic field in circular patterns that are perpendicular to the current. So let's continue on, right hand grip rule. Fingers are rotating this way in the grip. Okay. And that's how we can determine the direction of our magnetic field in the circular pattern. So this is what it looked like if we got eyes looking from above. Viewing from above, we would find that we have, in this example, a magnetic field lines that are directed circular in an anti-clockwise direction when observed from above, which is what our fingers predicted with our right hand grip. Let's have a look at some must-knows. Can you match scenario A, B, C, and D with the patterns, the magnetic field patterns one, two, three, and four? I'll pause, give it a go. So, pattern A. Well, using our right hand, we're placing our hand around the wire. Now remember, this represents a wire with current coming out of the page. So the thumbs going out towards me. The fingers are bending around in, as I said, an anti-clockwise direction. So that's what we end up. Number three here, we end up with a circular pattern in an anti-clockwise direction. Same as my hand predicted. This has got a circular pattern with an anti-clockwise grip of the fingers. Second scenario, we've got a wire traveling to the right with current. I can use my right hand again, thumb goes in the direction of current, my fingers wrap around it. That represents this one, number four. So I go back again, my fingers are going from the, off from the near side, from the top of the wire to the bottom, on the near side, top of the wire to the bottom is the magnetic field. Third one, we have again, this is representing a wire coming out of the page, but the current's going into the page with the cross. Current going into the page, that means we can end up with a clockwise rotation clockwise rotation with circular concentric circular rings for magnetic field. And finally, a wire going to the left. Current to the left, I can use my right hand grip again and I find that the magnetic field is coming from the bottom around the front to the top. Bottom around the front to the top. Caution, right hand only. Let's have a look at the second right hand rule. This one's called the right hand slap rule. No laughing. The right hand slap rule allows us to predict the direction of the force on a current carrying wire within a magnetic field. So we have here a magnetic field north to south with the lines representing. We've got a current carrying wire and that's going to generate an interactive force between the two. This time we use an open hand, hence the name the slap. Fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field as we show here with our lines. Thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. Notice they're perpendicular to one another, much like the wire here is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. And finally, the force comes from your palm. The palm gives you the direction of the force. All right, so if we look at this wire, it's got current going into the page, if you like, and it's got a magnetic field going across, then we'd expect the force to push it up using our right hand slap rule. So that's how predicted, and of course it would move it up. Very good. Let's practice these. Have a look at options A, B, and C, or questions A, B, and C, and see if you can predict what direction these wires will in fact move. Well, remember, this is a wire going in and out of the page with current going into the page. Another wire in and out of the page with current going in, and this is a wire going in and out of the page with current coming out. What's your prediction in terms of what direction they will move using the right-hand slap rule? Option A, we put our hand so that the fingers go from north to south, thumb is pointing into the page in this case, because the direction of the current is into the page. So you can't see my thumb in this hand, it's on the other side, but it does indicate, the palm indicates there would be a force pushing that wire down. Okay, the second one, option B. In this case, we've got fingers going from north to south again. Current, thumb is being pushed into the page, that's on the other side of my hand. Again, it predicts an upwards force. Very good, and finally, We've got a north to south. This time, the current is coming out of the page, so the thumb's pointing towards our face. It predicts an upwards force, and so it will force up. Excellent. Let's look at the following three options or questions, D, E, and F. Same thing, can you predict, will the current carrying wire moved left, right, up, down, in, or out? Have a go. 
Now the answers for D. We've got, this is now dots representing the magnetic field coming out of the page and current going to the right. Okay, magnetic fields, our fingers, they're pointing out towards us, current to the right. So my palm predicts there'd be a force pushing that wire downwards. This is not just a theoretical example. This actually does happen. This is how DC motors work. Second option here, we've got our current straight up the page, magnetic fields into the page of these crosses. So now we're going to have my thumb going up the page. My fingers are pointing into the screen, into the page. Okay, so that predicts my palm that's going to be pushed to the left. Very good. And finally, I've got again magnetic field lines coming out at me, directed towards my face, with the arrowhead, and the current's going to the left. So my hand would have the fingers pointing straight out of the screen at me and the thumb going to the left. That predicts from my palm a push upwards. That's the right hand slap rule. Caution, right hand only, right hand rule number three. Now this is the right hand solenoid rule. The right hand solenoid rule allows us to use the direction of the coil, the current in the coil, to predict the direction of the magnetic field around a solenoid. Now a solenoid is just a coil Quite often it's got an iron core in the middle, and it creates a magnetic field that is identical to a bar magnet. Let's have a look how this one works. So, number one, we place our right hand on top of the solenoid, and we do it in such a way that our fingers curl in the same direction as the current. You can see here the current at the bottom of this coil starts at the bottom, moves to the top along the front edge. My fingers start at the bottom and move to the top on the front edge of the solenoid. Now, so I've placed my right hand on it and I've done it in such a way that my fingers curl in the same direction as the current. My thumb now points towards the North Pole. It's as easy as it is. Place your hand in such a way that the fingers curl with the current carrying wire and your thumb will give you the direction and point towards the North Pole. Now, of course, we can then draw magnetic field lines. We know magnetic fields go from north and they curl around to the south. So the external magnetic field is always drawn from north to south. They don't cross over then they actually continue on straight through the iron core in a cyclic way. Okay, so it actually never stops, it goes around in a cycle. They never cross over. So external magnetic fields go north to south, internally they continue on. Let's have a look at the opposite direction in terms of the coil on the wire now. Now we've got current traveling from the top of the solenoid to the bottom, opposite direction. So. I use my hand, it's a bit hard to see, but I use my hand and this time my fingers starting at the top and are wrapping from the top around to the boards of the bottom. So I'm placing the right hand on the solenoid. My fingers are curling in the same direction as the current. That is starting at the top and going down towards the back on the bottom. And my thumb again will give me the North Pole. Okay, again we draw our field lines going from the north around to the south and continuing back through again. So external magnetic field goes from north to south, internal magnetic field continues that cycle right through. That's the right hand solenoid rule. A couple of examples here. We want to now use our knowledge of the right hand rule for solenoids to predict the polarity of each of these solenoids. Okay, so which one's the north or south? Let's have a look. In option A, you can try these yourself, pause if you like. Option A, we have a positive on the big terminal, a negative on the small current always goes from the positive to the negative. So it's wrapping around the front, around the front, around the front and returning. That's the same as my fingers starting at the bottom and curling to the top, which tells me this one on the left is the north, this is the north and this is the south. Good. Next option B, I've got my major positive terminal, the large one positive, it's negative. Current goes from the positive to the negative. So again, my fingers have to be wrapping from the bottom to the top. Same thing, bottom to the top, my thumb, Gives me the north, the other pole is the south. Our third option, large terminal is the positive, negative. So positive is running to the right and now it's coming down the leading edge. The leading edge of these coils is from top to bottom current. Okay, so I could wrap my fingers here. My fingers are now starting at the top and going down to the bottom. I'll go back one, so you can see that again. Starting at the top and wrapping to the bottom. Staying at the top and wrapping to the bottom. So that generates a north to my right, south to the left. Finally, we've got a large terminal, the positive, small terminal, the negative. Current's traveling again from the top to the bottom. My fingers wrap from the top to the bottom. Okay, fingers are curling from the top to the bottom. 
That gives me this side where my thumb is, is the north. Reverse this time, I've given you the north and south polarity. And I want you to work out the battery terminal polarity. Okay, so this is a north and a south. This is the north. When I put my hand on it, my thumb will be pointing to the north. My fingers are starting at the top and wrapping to the bottom. So the current must be going on the front edge from the top to the bottom. Again, my fingers start at the top and they wrap to the bottom. Same as this, which means our current must be traveling, leaving the left-hand side, coming into the right. Current always leaves from the positive terminal. So that's the correct battery polarity. On the right-hand side, let's have a look. I've got here north and south. When I put my hand, my thumb has to be pointing towards the north. Okay, my fingers are curling from the bottom to the top. That means the current must be in these leading edges on the front, going from the bottom to the top. Now, in order to get that, the current has to be leaving from this side on the right and returning to the left. Current always travels from the positive terminal to the negative. Third option here, we've got a north. So we put our north here, thumb pointing to the north. My fingers are curling from the bottom to the top. Current must follow the same, which means it's leaving this side to get that pattern happening. This must be the positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. And finally, north and south. North with my thumb. As you can see, north's here. My fingers are running from the top to the bottom. So the current will go top to the bottom as well, which means it must leave from this side, which is going to be the positive terminal. Good practice. Caution. Right hand only. Our final, our fourth and final right hand rule. Now this is the right hand rule for charged particles. The right hand charge rule allows you to use the direction of the magnetic field and the charge velocity to predict the direction of the force upon the charged particle. So we're going to start here with a positive charged particle. This red one is a positive charged particle. It's moving to the right with a velocity into a region of magnetic field which is directed into the page. All right, so that's the pattern. It hits the magnetic field and it bends in a circular arc. Looking at the hands again, my fingers. In this case, magnetic. when it hits this magnetic field region, my fingers are pointing into the page. My thumb gives the direction of velocity of a positive charge, and there'll be a force. When it hits this magnetic field, it's going to experience a force up. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Now let's look at what happens on that charged particle as it hits that field. So when it's at this point, we find there's a force up, magnetic field into the page and a velocity to the right. Slight time further, we find there's velocity now has changed because of the force. Velocity is still a tangent to this curve and the velocity and the force are at 90 degrees. Magnetic field still into the page. A little bit further, because of the force, the velocity is a tangent to this path and it's still perpendicular with the force and right to the end. What you notice is this is a complete circular arc. Always the force is perpendicular to the velocity and both of which are perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, there's our force straight up. Time later to this point. Time later, perpendicular again to the velocity. And again, perpendicular velocity, always intersecting at this point here. It's going in a circular arc. The force upon the charged particle is constant for this whole duration inside the magnetic field and perpendicular to its velocity, resulting in the charged particle traveling along a circular path when it's within the magnetic field. Now, if we did this for a negative charged particle, obviously it's the reverse charge, you'd expect the reverse effect. It comes in and it bends downwards. Same thing, comes in with velocity, hits the magnetic field and bends downwards. So we've got a field into the page, we've got a velocity to the right. Now in this scenario, we know that this is a right hand. Right hand rule is designed for positive charged particles. It would predict an upwards. However, I'm using here a negative, so it will be the reverse direction downwards. You just have to know or be aware which particular charged particle we're using. Positive follows the palm up, negative is the reverse from the back of the hand. So once again, it comes in and it travels downwards. So the path of the negative charged particle within a magnetic field is the exact opposite direction to that of the positively charged particle. To summarize, negatives bend downwards in this arrangement, positives bend upwards using our right hand rule for charged particles. Of course, if our magnetic field lines are reversed, we had magnetic field lines pointing out towards us rather than into the page, then these two paths would be the opposite, they'd be reversed. Finally, let's have a look. I've got one, two, three, four diagrams. I want you to predict what is the direction of these one, two, three, four particles. Pause if you like. First one comes in. Using our right hand rule, we can predict that it's going to go downwards because this is in fact magnetic fields coming out of the page. So if we grabbed our hand 
and we put our thumb towards in the direction of the velocity and rotated our hand so the fingers are pointing out towards us, straight at our face, we would find that our hand would generate a downwards force for that positive charge. Alternatively, option B, we'd find fingers into the page, thumb pointing to the right. The only way you can do that is to have your palm pointing up. It would make it curve upwards. And of course, the negative are the reverse. Thumb still going in, except this time it'll bend the opposite. Okay, a positive charge would bend downwards in this particular magnetic field. Therefore, a negative will bend upwards. And the same here, it's the reverse of the above one. I recommend that you always treat it as though it's a positive. Predict using your palm what direction the force is. And if it's negative, remember it will be reversed. You just have to keep your wits about you. Thank you for seeing this video through to the end. I hope you have a greater understanding now of the four rules for magnetic field lines, as well as the four hand rules used. I'd ask you as always to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.